Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today what we want to do is master the DLOOKUP function. So let's get started. So the DLOOK function has, has these arguments. It has an expression, which is required, that identifies the field whose value you want to return. The domain, which is the table or a query that you want to get the data from, and the criteria that allows it to sift down to a single record. So let's look at each one of these and see what happens with each one. So why do you use the DLOOKUP function? Why don't you just put it in a query? Well, you use the DLOOKUP function generally when you don't want to attach the table or the particular data that you want to retrieve to that main query because of slowness or because of maybe some logistics, whatever. But generally, the table that you're getting the data from DLOOKUP is not attached to the form that you want. So DLOOKUP is used to jump out of the control table for the form and jump to another table to bring back some information just to display on the form. Of course, with the DLOOKUP function filling your field, you wouldn't have edit capability. You wouldn't allow the tab stops to stop there for the user to try to type in that field. It would be totally static information that's being pulled back. So let's look at each of the items. Now, the DLOOKUP ref returns a single field value based on the information specified in the criteria. So we know the field it wants to return. We know the table it wants to come from. The criteria then enables us to return a single value. So although the criteria is an optional argument, if you don't supply a criteria, the DLOOKUP function returns a random value in the domain. Okay, so if you have a full table, it'll just find the first one and give it to you. That's fine. And that's generally not what you want to see. So if no record at all satisfies the criteria or the domain contains no records at all, uh, the DLOOKUP just returns a null and you'll just have an empty field. If more than one field meets the criteria, DLOOKUP function returns the first one it finds. So you really need to make it zero down to a single record. And generally you use that by using a primary key as the focus of your criteria. So how do you use it? Okay, here we have DLOOKUP. You have an open parenthesis. And in quotes, you put the first part of it, which is the fields you want to grab back you also may put in other text that you want between the fields or in front of the fields. You can do either one. We'll show examples of both. But in general, in quotes is your first how, what data you want to be retrieved. The second field is the, the table or the query that you want the data to come from. It can be either one, table or query, it doesn't matter. And then the last is the criteria. In this case, we're going to use customer ID equaling a field on the form that we're grabbing the data from. So let's take a look at how this works. Now, here's our sales invoice form. And, and right now you can see at the bottom left that there are 155 records in this particular uh, form. Now those 155 records, these customers have various invoices. The label here where it says fun zone, the text field, is a an unbound text box and that unbound text box allows us to find the various customers within the invoice table so if a customer has an invoice it allows us to find the particular invoice if we change the fun zone here of course this is the information that we're talking about being static all of these are pulled back with a DLOOKUP function. So with that DLOOKUP function, it allows us to display information that is informational to the customer. They know that Fun Zone's contact is Mark Gogger and the address, city, zip, and phone numbers for that particular client. The customer ID is up here. This is the customer ID text field that I showed you in a screen earlier, and we'll show you that one again. So let's, let's take a look at the various elements on this when we put this in design view. So highlighted right now is the DLOOKUP 
for the first name, last name. And when we go over and look at the control source, we see the example that I gave you on the previous screen where we want the first name and we padded it with a space in the middle and then the last name. It's taken from table customer contacts and the customer ID is to be equal to the customer ID on the form. We look at the next one and here we want to pull the address. So we look for just the address as the field we want to pull, table con customers as the table, and the customer ID still is the same criteria. Now, the next one with the same criteria, here we're gonna go ahead and put an, a comma between city and state, and then a couple spaces between state and zip code with the same table and same criteria. Then the last example we show is for the phone numbers. And here you can see that we've added quite a bit more text. So in the area where we pull the data, we see phone number colon, and then we ask for the phone, phone field. And then we say fax, num fax and the fax field. Still the same criteria and the same table. So you can see that what we do here it is actually quite repetitive. And once you get a handle on it, it's quite simple. If you're able to get some value out of this, we really would appreciate you hitting the like button and help us to uh, create more videos. And subscribing to the channel, of course, would help us greatly as we continue to grow and hopefully are able to produce more good quality content for you. So hope to see you again later. Thanks.